so much to uh, talk to you about. I'm sure all of my burning questions will be answered in the new Hulu docuseries coming uh, April 26th. Four parts. Kind of reminds me of like, a, like an epic event like the, like the History of the Eagles documentary or Tom Petty or, you know. And it's called Thank You, Good Night. This to me sounds like a curtain call. Don't, don't tell us it is, right? I think that the beautiful thing is, is that I honestly don't know the answer, man. John, how are you, man? I'm good, sir. How are you? I am doing great. You're having quite the year to start this thing already. I mean, you were honored uh, a few Fridays ago, Music Care's Person of the Year, with uh, some some big luminaries coming out to uh, to pay homage to you, like the boss, your your old buddy Bruce, uh, people like Wolfgang Van Halen, Sammy Hagar showed up. Did you give love a bad name? What is it like to watch your songs being performed by by other people that you you know and love? Uh, it was daunting. I'm I'm sort of happy that I'd never been to a Music Cares event before because everything was a surprise. But it was a beautiful evening. Um, the whole, whole music industry is there to support a wonderful cause which celebrates musicians in need and, and raises money for guys that are, you know, whether they need uh, mental or, or, or health services or financial aid. Mm -hmm. And so they they honor one guy a year, and this year I happen to be it between the catalog and all the philanthropic work over the years. Um, I was fortunate enough to have been asked to be the guy. And so, you know, I got Paul McCartney to your left and Bruce Springsteen to your right. You go, this is a pretty good day. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Wow. Speaking yeah. of your uh, philanthropic efforts, your JBJ Soul Kitchen, four, you have four restaurants now, right? Tom's River, Jersey City, yeah. uh, Red Bank, one at Rutgers, uh, New York campus. Thank Last you. check, 170,000 over meals this served. Year. Yeah. Wow, yeah. man. Yeah. Yeah, every year. Um, it's been fa fabulous and fascinating. And unfortunately, there's still a great need for it. Um, you know, in COVID, we even had to open a food bank, which supplied the, supplied the food pantries with everything they needed through COVID out on Eastern Long Island. Mm. And it's something that, you know, we feel very passionate about because ultimately you don't need a scientist to find the cure. It's about breaking bread. And this brings everybody and anybody together. Well, we love seeing the pictures of you in the kitchen and, and with everybody working there. It's, it's I got to commend you on the great work that you're, you know, the good that you're doing in the world. We appreciate that. Uh, you're kind. Thank you. So much to uh, talk to you about. I'm sure all of my burning questions will be answered in the new Hulu docuseries coming uh, April 26th. Four parts. Kind of reminds me of like a, like an epic event, like the like the history of the Eagles documentary or Tom Petty, or you know, and it's called "Thank You, Good Night." This to me sounds like a curtain call. Don't don't tell us it is, right? I think that the beautiful thing is is that I honestly don't know the answer, Rem. And okay. uh, and and you brought up the two, in my opinion, greatest documentaries uh, of the modern rock era because both the Bogdanovich Petty one and the Eagles one, which I'm familiar with both um we we shot for quality like that it's not a puff piece you know i take some punches in the nose as do other guys in the band mm -hmm. but everybody um everybody was was fine with it you know it was just like this is each of our truths and it was a 40th year anniversary so an opportunity to look at, at what we've done and the soundtrack to people's lives you know worldwide multi-generational soundtracks what do you how do you feel when you look back on that of of what uh, of the impact that you've had on your fans lives you know i don't i, I don't know it firsthand i only know it from afar mm. uh, i know that the catalog stands up i know that it's still you know it does very well and streaming services are kind of the proof of that because if you want to play a little game sometime put in your favorite artist and click on their name and see how many people listen to them on a monthly basis and in truth, Bon Jovi gets a lot of spins out there. So a billion. You give love a bad name. Just did a billion last month, uh, catching up right to uh, living on a prayer from a year ago, right? Yeah, and you yeah. know, you got, my life has had a billion uh, video <laughs> streams, and and so the catalog really has has stood the test of time. Um, and so there's generations of people still listening to the music, and that that's what well. It's not really what makes me do it, but I still love writing a song. And when mm -hmm. you write it, you want to share it and you put it out there, you know, and, and then what happens, happens. The new song, Legendary, I've gotten a chance to hear it. I've cranked it five, six times in a row, blown away. It's really great, man. I, I'm really digging it. 
Thank you. Thank you very, very much. It's an album that we're incredibly proud of. It is by far not the best song on the record. There are several. Um, but it's a, it's a really great album. We're very proud of it. Legendary, the first song from it, uh, is coming out on Thursday online. You'll be able to hear it. And I love how you, uh, you're you giving some love to Neil Diamond and Van Morrison, name check in, <laughs> uh, Brown Eyed Girl and Sweet Caroline in it. That's pretty cool. I love that. In, in this instance, as much as you know, I grew up on Van and that song, um, mm -hmm. it is my wife in, in the Brown Eyed Girl category. I got it. Yep. <laughs> I certainly wanted to put in singing Living on a Prayer, but I thought maybe that's a little too self serving because oh. when the lights go on in the bar, Chances are prayer is coming on. <laughs> <laughs> and Tommy and Gina have already appeared in a couple of your songs. Yeah, already. I know. They, they, they've done their time. <laughs> they're, they're retired. Right. Um, but no, it, it's just the kind of a song that, unlike the album 2020, which here I was being the narrator, it was a difficult time in the world, writing songs about George Floyd to COVID to uh, soldiers with PTSD. That was a very introspective uh, narration of a time that we were all living in this record and the delving into the archiving and the film and my surgery and where we are now is I'm on the other side of all of that. So there is truly just joy in this album. There's there's joy and you're going to hear it in the narration because this the the the, the, the storyteller has come to you know, like a place of comfort and and you know resolve and there's joy again well, that's great to hear man that's really great to hear i've watched the trailer a few times as well for the uh, docu series it's yeah. a roller coaster of emotion highs lows you've got you've got present members you've got past members richie is a big part of it obviously deservedly uh and i don't get me wrong i love phil x i remember him from my la days but is what's the future or do you even know what the future is for maybe a one-off or, or anything else? Hey, the door would always be open. It's not that. I mean, but 11 years ago, um, you know, for uh, for reasons that were at, certainly nothing to do with the band, um, he, he walked out. There was mm. no animosity. There was nothing but love. But we had a show that night and subsequently had won the next night. And for 11 years, I've been making records and doing shows. So everyone knows where the bus stops. You know, you <laughs> right. You show up at work, you know. Um, exactly. You've got to not do it because somebody was unable. So, but there's nothing but love. And so G Richie's gone on, on his own and, you know, he raised his daughter. And, mm. you know, so if he wanted to show up and play sometime, he knows the songs, you know. Absolutely right. no animos, I can promise you that. I'm not sure if you, I, I'm hoping you covered this in the, in the docuseries, but you were the first rock band to headline Russia back in 89 as well, Moscow Music Peace Festival. What do you remember when you look back on that time? We went there and played Lenin Stadium. It's probably the, I could probably verify, certify that we was the first stadium show in, mm. in, in the Soviet Union. But it was, um, you know, I don't know if we knew how big it was or even if it in fact was. But when I went there almost 30 years to the to the week, it was like really close. I went back and I was explaining to a reporter in now Russia, no longer the Soviet Union. I said, you know, let me tell you a story of what happened when I was in Russian military garb and I come down the center of the aisle and the reporter says to me, let me tell you how the story went. And I was like, wow. Whoa. And he goes, I was there. He said, it, it's it's legend here, you know, that you came down the center aisle yeah. dressed as a Russian soldier. And that is true. Because mm. on the first night, um, the great equalizer was that none of our records were out in the Soviet Union. In fact, you would go to prison if you were caught even with a list of rock and roll records. And I, and I met a young man who would keep it on a small piece of paper and show people what he had to listen to or to trade. And he would eat the list if a policeman were ever to come. Oh my God. Which is all real true stories. Sure. And, and so we played the first night, we were closing the show. And to be bluntly honest, we got our asses handed to us by the Scorpions. Second night, I was like, how do I win the night? And that's when I went, I got it. I saw the stage, I saw the, the military garb. I saw the opportunity. I dress as the soldier. I tell the band <laughs> to start. I, I said, just keep going till I get there. We win. 
the second night, everything turned around. And Bon Jovi was now, you know, legendary in, in the Soviet Right. Hulu docuseries coming out April 26th. It's a Friday. Thank you. Good night. The Bon Jovi story. I cannot wait to see this whole thing. Thank you all the very best. Appreciate it.